Hey guys, this is the Consummate Shill. Join me today as we take a look into the good, the bad, and everything in between in the online multiplayer world of Red Dead Redemption 2. Guys, this game doesn't need a big introduction or a fancy opening at this point. The majority of people know how great the single player game is, and I talked enough about that previously. So something to note before we get started, I'm not going to be covering anything pertaining to story mode or really any game mechanics in general, unless they're specifically unique to online play, of which there's maybe a handful of those. If you're looking for a more in-depth review of game mechanics, graphics, story, all that stuff for the game as a whole, I encourage you to check out my huge 48 minute deep dive into this game where I cover pretty much everything there is to cover. I'll link that video in the description and I'll provide a direct link at the top of the screen now. The first thing I want to discuss are the differences I've noticed in the online world versus what you get with the story experience. What I felt right off the bat was how your character controls. It's, it's much snappier and smoother online than it is when you're controlling Arthur in story mode. It's really strange. All feeling of weight and physics seem removed in online play. The clunkiness I elaborate on in my full review, it's still there in some respects, but the movements are instant, uh, seemingly instant anyway, and the controls seem much more responsive and accurate online. So, you lose the feeling of physics and weightiness and gain responsiveness and control overall, I, I guess I would say. And for me, it does feel better online, just controlling your character in general. You're going to have to decide for yourself what you like better, it's just going to be one of those personal feel sort of things. The dead eye mechanic is also different online. The main change is the missing slow motion functionality, which th that's entirely gone. It makes sense, uh, just practically. Uh, with the others in the game world, slowing down the world for each player's dead eye duration, it's, it's just not going to be possible. So you still get all the same benefits from using dead eye, just no slow motion. The targeting is also the painting style like it is in the beginning of story mode, which that's that's a real bummer for me. I absolutely hate the automatic shot ticking. Like you basically just drag your reticle over the target and it just tick, 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 paints shots onto the target. It, it, it's just, it's not good. It doesn't feel good. There's a few situations when it feels intuitive, like in higher speed moments with manual targeting it, where, where it wouldn't be feasible, but those are few and far between and overall it, it does, it just feels bad. Also keep in mind, I'm a mouse and keyboard user, so this may have a better feel with a controller, but as I said, for me, I just don't like it at all. I just wish we were given the option to manually tick the shots rather than paint only mode. It may exist, but I definitely couldn't figure out a way to activate it if it does. Another big difference is the world. It, overall, it just feels really empty online right now. R really void of a lot of elements that made the campaign feel so alive. There won't be nearly as many random chance encounters and side quests, which are called stranger quests online, and the ones that are available really pale in comparison to this type of content offline. The main quest chain online, also, it, it's okay. It's not bad, but goodness god, it's, it is not even in the same ballpark. It's not even in the same stratosphere as the story mode main quest. Now, admittedly, I did enjoy matchmaking for story missions with others, but, you know, sometimes you get a real turd that just dives headfirst into everything, guns blazing, but uh, the co-op experience for missions, it, it was good overall. I, honestly, I had a lot of fun. But anyway, back to the feel of the world. The, the towns are still bustling and feel very much alive. Maybe not quite to the extent they were in the campaign, but they're still fantastic. You never feel alone in the towns online, even the smaller ones. Uh, the world is really, in most cases, a one-to-one -one copy which you could say it's good and bad, I guess. I would have liked to see a little more variety, maybe some slightly redesigned towns, additions and subtractions of houses and hideouts, ranches, maybe some different pathing across terrain, just some subtle changes out in the world that make it feel just a little different, give it a little nuance compared to, you know, what you become used to in the story. Personally, I think the new Austin area is pretty dull and empty overall online, which that's a shame, really. I didn't explore it as much as I wanted to previously. I'm much prefer spending my time anywhere north, northeast, east of Blackwater, and, and that's just the, the overall feeling I get. The online world is just plain empty. I mean, it, it is empty, man. There's just no other way to describe it. You just don't get that feeling of life around every corner, over every hill, you know, stuff constantly happening, popping off around you. It's, it's, it's not any sort of continuation of the story experience, and the online gimmick itself really isn't comparable to it in any way except for the physical world and some familiar characters you're going to come across. Uh, once you accept that fact, you'll probably find some enjoyment playing online, but for now at least, I'd keep my expectations in check. So, what are you going to be doing online if the online story and side quests are few and the ones that do exist are just mediocre? 
Well, if you're not PvPing, <laughs> and just we'll get to that here in a bit, you're going to be farming, doing missions, and making money through each of the three roles currently on offer. The Collector, the Trader, and the Bounty Hunter. Now, I'll give a brief overview of each of these, but the main idea here is you're going to be making money by working these sort of jobs, and you can do all of them alongside one another if you choose to, and each has its own experience to grind, upgrades to purchase to make your job easier and more efficient, as well as various cosmetics and utility items pertaining to that specific job. Now, one thing I need to mention, there will be a fourth roll released on December 13th, which by the time this video gets published, that'll be right around the corner. They're adding the Moonshiner to the mix, and while not many details have been released so far, it's probably safe to assume you're going to be manufacturing booze and carting it off somewhere to be sold. I'm hoping though it's not just going to be a trader clone hawking liquor in place of the animal goods. So speaking of the trader, with this role you're going to be dealing in any and all things hunting. There's really not much to this or any of these jobs for that matter, but you set up your camp, you go out hunting, then return with animal carcasses, skins, plumes, you get the picture. You'll turn those into your partner Crips and he processes them and turns them into sellable goods. Once enough goods have been crafted, you load them onto your cart, drive it to a specified location, and you make the sale. Now, sometimes you get resistance along the way, sometimes you don't. It all seems random, really, just void of any rhyme or reason in terms of when you're attacked during transport. Apparently other players can interfere with your deliveries as well, but I've done probably north of 20 of these deliveries, I'd say, and I've yet to see another player get involved. There are other things you can do in this camp as well, such as buy a camp pot where you can cook premium meals that fortify your cores. This is also where your wardrobe, crafting fire, camp store, and your bed slash resting area are located. The trader is sort of the must-have role in my opinion with all the amenities provided with the camp. You can set it up in really any area of the world, which is a really nice touch, and it's just nice to have a sort of mobile base camp when you need it. And it accentuates all the other roles nicely. One thing I'll add here is there's a disappearing issue sometimes when I'd be hunting online. I'd shoot an animal, they'd crest a hill and go out of sight maybe for a few seconds, then just vanish completely. I never noticed this happening in the campaign playthrough for me, so this is kind of a unique bug to online play. Just something I thought was worth mentioning, but I, I don't know. I don't know if any other people are having this problem, it's just something that, uh, that happened to me a couple times. Onto the collector. Uh, in practice, it's probably the simplest role available. You'll purchase a collection bag in the beginning, and that'll be your vessel for all the collectibles you amass. You'll also receive a sort of running list that tallies up and keeps track of everything you've found. There's several handfuls of sets you'll collect, and this crap is scattered everywhere throughout the world. Once you complete a set, you sell it to this traveling gypsy lady, Madame... So I, I can't remember her name, it escapes me at this point, but she's this gypsy lady you started the role with, or you can mail it to her. And that's pretty much the gist of it. You can sell all these items individually as well, but you get much more value for a set as a whole. Also, there's a website that makes finding the locations of all these items trivial for the most part, and really, it's the only way to go, in my opinion. Otherwise, you're going to be buying maps at like 20 bucks a clip to get the locations pinged on your map for you, and that could get extremely expensive really quick, and it just really cuts into your profits. I'll show the link on screen, as well as link it in the description below if you'd like to use it, and if you decide to progress through this role, I'd strongly recommend doing so. One thing to add, you'll need to purchase a shovel and metal detector to start gathering the more valuable collections, and they can be a bit pricey, just like everything else in the beginning. But the upgrades for this job are some of the most important. That's pretty much all there is to the collector, I can't really think of anything more of note that I could add. So lastly, the bounty hunter, and this, and this is really just as straightforward as picking up bounty posters and hunting them for cash, just like in story mode, just on a much larger scale and higher frequency. I do have to say, the bounty variety is pretty damn good as far as the situations you get involved in and the locations you're going to visit. Bounty boards with posters are liberally sprinkled throughout the map and any of them can be started at any time. Unfortunately, you can only accept one at a time, so it's a start one, finish one kind of system. There are also legendary bounties that are more difficult and in turn more lucrative in regards to both experience and cash. Now, I'm not entirely sure, but I think you're only able to complete one legendary bounty per day. This could be entirely wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're on the daily style system. I haven't played on mine as much as I would have liked, so the finer details like this are a little fuzzy. There's also a bounty wagon you can purchase that allows you to haul in up to, I think it's six live bounties at a time, which that can be very useful on larger missions. Circling back to Trader for a moment, there's also a hunting wagon you can purchase that allows you to do the same sort of thing with game animals. So anyway, in a nutshell, that's what you're doing. You're taking on bounties for cash, nothing much more to say about it. Now, all the roles have a leveling system that you'll be progressing through by earning experience from completing the various tasks I've mentioned. There are rewards scattered through the numerous level thresholds. Rewards include stuff like outfits, 
holster accessories, horses, melee weapons, just to name a few. And they're all unique to the particular job you purchase them through. As far as the roles go, how they work, and what you'll be rewarded with, I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to. There is a good bit to do with these, but I just found them just very repetitive and boring overall. There needs to be way more variety and less feeling like you're just farming money and experience with no real goals in mind other than getting rich and having cool clothing. Because that's, that's in a nutshell, that's really what it feels like. You know, to me, the roll system just doesn't feel refined enough to have any sort of lasting appeal, at least as it stands now. Something I want to add about the rolls, uh, in order to start progressing through each roll, there's a 15 gold bar buy-in price for the initial item and quest that get you started for each roll. Now if you math that out, that's 45 gold bars to start every roll, and I started with 50 in online mode. Now that may have been a pre-order bonus, I can't remember, I'm just, I'm not entirely sure, but the point is, just don't start frivolously spending your gold if you ever have any plans to play the roll content. Also, uh, currently, if you have Twitch Prime, and this I'm recording this on December 11th, 2019, if you have Twitch Prime, you can link your Rockstar account to it and get the Bounty Hunter role for free, which I would highly recommend doing. Saving 15 gold, uh, that's a fair amount, as gold is the premium currency in the game. Premium meaning it costs real money, and while you can earn gold by playing, the rate at which you earn it is extremely low. So, moving on, another thing I meant to touch on earlier was the lack of any sort of robbery mechanics outside the lackluster stranger side quests. There's next to nothing in the way of mission-based robberies, which is a huge miss for me. The same flavor of stagecoach robberies from Story Mode are still around, you, you know, the ones where you pick up information from the snitch at the post office and you go hold up a coach. Those are there, but they're gated behind a worse delay than you'd be used to from the campaign, so you really can't do a ton of those. Also, when you do complete these... <laughs> The rewards are just a joke, really. Usually to the tune of a very small fraction of a gold bar and a few dollars. And when I say a few dollars, that's what I mean. We're talking single digit dollars for a 10 plus minute mission in a world where a decent hat costs 150 bucks and the collector shovel sets you back like 350. You know, other than the coaches, that's it as far as robbing is concerned. Coaches out in the world that aren't linked to missions never have any valuables on them either. There aren't any home robberies, and the houses you come across in the world have some loot strewn about, but it's, it's never anything of note aside from like collectibles here and there for the collector role. Trains are basically always empty and lacking anything to steal, and I do mean anything. There is nothing on most of these trains. I think it'd be huge fun to coordinate robberies with friends in Discord and play them out, but robbing just isn't a big thing online, and there's a lot of missed potential there, I think. While we're talking about bad ways to make a quick buck, one good way early on I found to rack up some quick cash was to do treasure maps. Now, I received several of these early on, Seemed like I'd get one in the mail each day I played. I'm not sure if this was a one-off thing that Rockstar was doing, like a promotional sort of thing at the time, or if it's a consistent thing, but if you're receiving maps, if you do ever receive any maps, when you're first starting out in online mode, I would definitely take advantage of them. They're definitely not as fun, and they're much easier to find than treasure hunting offline, but they're certainly a good way to make some money to get you started. Rewards were usually like 1.3 gold bars and like 100 to $130, which that's a pretty nice amount of money when you're just getting started. So really, the rolls are the only true, consistent, reliable way to make decent money uh, in online mode. The treasure hunting thrown in in the beginning kind of give you a boost, but um, everything else, specifically for making money, seems like a waste of time. Now, I can't speak on how lucrative PvP is because I haven't done too much of it, but what I can tell you is that I absolutely loathe PvP in Rockstar games, and this one is no exception. The big issue I have is controllers. Now, I don't have an issue with controllers in general. I mean, if you want to use a controller on PC, knock yourself out. You paid good money for the game just like everyone else, and you're entitled to use whatever peripherals you want and enjoy the game more with a controller, that's great. Use it. But if you use a controller in this game, you can use assisted aiming, which, let's be honest, it's auto-aim. There's no other way to explain it, that's flat out what it is. It's auto-aim. And if you're using a mouse and keyboard, which I do exclusively, you can't use assisted aiming. Now, before I get flamed for not including it, there are what's called free aim lobbies. And yes, with a few changes in your settings, you can join a game that's locked to free aim only, at least in theory, and you can get paired up and matched against other players using free aim. Now, the problem with this is the amount of players utilizing auto aim far outweigh the ones wanting a free aim experience. It's really not even close, at least from what I've seen. 
So anyway, if you want to PvP consistently and play with other players consistently, you're going to be in mixed games and lobbies, and it's an absolute nightmare when you're fighting someone with auto-aim while you're using a mouse and keyboard. The PvP, for this reason alone, is dead to me. I, I just, I can't stomach another game of it. It's absolutely out of control. If the free aim population ever grows and you can get into free aim only games 100% of the time and the matchmaking doesn't take forever, I'll consider giving it another shot, but I've lost all interest in it completely. <laughs> and I gotta say, what the f*** is the appeal of having auto aim in a PvP setting? I mean, what kind of bums get enjoyment out of the game playing for you? Because that's what it's doing. It's aiming for you. Now, there would have to be a way to differentiate keyboard and mouse players from controller users because they're very different accuracy-wise, and that's uh, and I'd be fine with that, but auto-aim. Good God. I, with any control type, any game, it doesn't matter. If you'd rather use auto-aim when fighting other players, frankly, you're a f***ing donkey. And I say that with sincere conviction. That's all there is to it. Now, aside from that glaring problem, I think the PvP definitely has potential. Some of the modes I played seem like they'd be very fun in a competitive environment, and I love the idea of using revolvers, lever, bolt action, and breech loading rifles in PvP. That's, that's hugely appealing to me. And the idea of free roam PvP out in this freaking massive world where you can interrupt other players' missions, just getting a shootout in town, whatever. Like I said, I don't have much PvP experience, so take this maybe with a grain of salt, but these conclusions are drawn on, I'd say, about seven to eight hours, maybe, or so of PvP, you know, testing it out, which I think that's plenty to get a grasp on what I, thought, what I think of it in general. I really don't have anything else to add. I think if some things are changed around in the online experience, especially PvP is shaken up a little bit, I would be willing to give it another shot, and I probably will eventually and do another update video at that point in time. So, I can't really think of anything else I want to discuss pertaining to the online stuff. There's a lot of issues. Uh, some with technical stuff, some with substance. To tell you the truth, the fun, it's... <laughs> The fun just isn't there for me overall with the online play. The jobs are repetitive and tedious. The story, it's just, it's bland and forgettable. I, I just never really cared about it. Most of the side quests are uninteresting and they're all basically worthless in terms of experience and money. The PvP is rough around the edges and the auto aim therein is just nonsensical absurdity. Rockstar just needs to make a big effort to smooth this whole experience over. If anyone has the tools and personnel to do it, it's them. Will they ever bring the online experience to its full potential? It's hard to say. I'd like to think they will. <laughs> Man, it, there's so much potential in a world like this. There really is. There are some great minds and talented people over in that studio, and it'd really be a shame to never see this game evolve into what it could be. Only time is going to tell, and I do look forward to seeing what ideas these guys come up with and what changes they make in the future. So, should you play Red Dead Redemption 2 online? If you already have the game or plan to buy the game to play through the story mode, absolutely. I'd recommend jumping in and giving it a shot. There is fun to be had here. There, there really is. What I wouldn't recommend doing, however, is purchasing this game solely to play it online, it, at least right now. Give it some time, monitor the climate over the course of the next two, three, four months, make a decision then, because currently, for me, it's, it's not in a state I would consider big time fun or worth the money solely for the online play. So anyway guys, like I mentioned earlier, if you haven't watched the full story mode review of the game, check it out. I go into a ton of detail with a ton of the mechanics and systems in the game and really dissect it so anyone can understand what they're going to be getting themselves into and what they can expect for their money. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this review and hopefully you learned something today about Red Dead Redemption 2's online mode. If you guys enjoyed the review, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. It helps me out a lot and I really do appreciate it. Ring the notification bell to be alerted when new reviews are released and to stay up to date and informed. And really make sure your gaming budget is spent on quality games worthy of your hard earned money. Also, let me know what you thought about this review in the comments and what games you'd like to see me do in the future. And thanks for watching.